Hey, everybody, what's going on? It's Steve Peterson with Infinity Investments. And we're going to talk about in this video whether you should sell your investment property or you should keep it. You know, I, I, as a broker, I'm getting this question all the time, pretty much once or twice a week right now during this pandemic. Because a lot of people are, are, are you know, I don't want to say worry, but but trying to figure out their next move. Right. And so a lot of people were planning to sell. And now they're kind of pumping the brakes trying to figure it out. A lot of people weren't thinking about selling. And now they're kind of thinking, well, well what's a good idea? What should I do? You know, what's next? So I've got five points I want to talk about when deciding whether you should sell your investment property. And really, I think if you're going to sell your investment property, what that really means is that you're going to exchange your investment property into a better asset. You know, sometimes people are going to say, let me just sell and cash out. But for most of y'all out there, what we're talking about really is whether we should sell and conduct a tender. Nobody really wants to pay capital gains tax, especially if they love the property that they have. Some people, they don't like their property. But most of y'all out there, you love your property, especially if you bought it the last you know, five years or so ago. You really love your property, right? Because you got a lot of cash flow and appreciation and so forth. So let's talk a little bit about, you know, what are some of the keys to, you know, figuring out if you should sell? So number one, I think you've got to take into consideration a few things. Property condition. What is the condition of your existing property? What is the condition of the existing marketplace? What are the tax consequences if you sell? And really, and most important, what is your long-term plan, right? That is the number one thing, okay? What's your long-term plan? What's the property's condition? What's the market conditions? Uh, what are the, are the tax consequences, right? Because even if you're going to conduct an exchange, you know, that's a high-level, sophisticated move, right? Some people do it in their sleep, but it can be very challenging. So if you blow your exchange, pay a lot of money in taxes, capital gains taxes. So you really want to understand what are those tax consequences? So that's kind of step one. And so when you look about, you think about what are your property conditions? If you're going to sell a building, right? Then, you know, that's important. What is the cosmetic appeal of the property? And then what is the functionality? You need a roof. You need to come rewire it with electrical. Does it look like crap from outside? These are important things. And when you're going to go and sell a property, you have got to put your best foot forward at the very least, in cosmetically making the property appealing. But this is also the case for commercial investment properties. We all, in the residential world, I think everybody who's ever bought a home, uh, that first impression is important. Unless you're looking for a fixer on the property, then you want to see it be up. Most buyers, they walk up to a home, they want to see it look nice. Well, guess what else? Investors want to see the same thing. If they walk up to a building and it's, it don't. Paint job is horrible. The bushes are, you know, overgrown. The, the gutters are hanging. Well, they're going to discount you, man. That's just what investors do. Uh, so you want to put your best foot forward. Now, it doesn't mean you want to completely renovate the property necessarily because you don't want to overspend and not be able to get that back in terms of your return. A lot of times you want to put your best foot forward and making the property look presentable, uh, clearing any, any termite uh, issues if there are some. If there's major issues addressing them. But at the same time, you don't want to overspend. Everybody's kind of got to kind of figure out you know, your own situation, your own capital, you got enough capital to fix stuff up, so on and so forth. But you want to make the property look nice. There it is. Then ideally, market conditions. Now, here's the thing. We're talking about selling. We're talking about exchanging. So there's two markets. What does the property look like when you go to sell it? Okay, are there ready, willing, and able buyers? Is there financing in the marketplace? Where are the price points at? Where are the cap rates at? When you sell, you want to sell in the upswinging market or when the market's at the top. You don't ideally want to sell when it's coming down, although some people might get caught in that situation and still could potentially work out well for them. But you want to try to look at the market conditions and sell when the market's going up or when it's peak, right? Thing is, you don't know when it's at its absolute peak. So don't get greedy. Try to wait for it to go all the way up, but make sure that it's at a price point where you think the property would sell where it's a sufficient price to give you the return you're looking for, right? 
Just don't get greedy about it. I've seen a lot of people miss trying to do this, right? Now, the tax consequences of the individual situation, you can talk to a tax professional about it, but just know you're going to pay federal capital gains, and in most states, like my state, the state, you're going to pay a hefty amount of state capital gains. So you want to know what that is. Please talk to your tax person about that. Most importantly, I think you need to have a long-term plan of, of what is your investment portfolio want to accomplish for you, right? Not for someone else, not what your friend is doing, not what you saw on TV, not what you read in a book, what you've determined for yourself, okay? You got to sit down and really figure out, okay, what are my assets, what do I want them to accomplish for? A lot of people, that's they want to pass an income. Some people, they make a lot of income. They have a lot of income. They're looking at growth. Other people are just looking at, looking at tax advantages. What is your long term? So that is the first thing you want to evaluate when considering whether you're set. Okay. What's your long term plan? What's the property condition? What's the market conditions? What are the tax Number two, bottom line is we want to employ a formula to help us to make this decision. Okay. Uh, not necessarily just, hey, I want to go, you know, rip, buy another property, sell this property, buy another property. Let's look at some formulas that are out there, right? And a great formula to look at is what is the current return on investment when you purchase the property versus where you are now, okay? And in real estate, there's several methods of Calculating returns, we make money from cash flow. We make money from principal pay down. Every time you make that mortgage payment, the balance gets paid down. We make money from the property appreciating a value. We also get some tax benefits of the property depreciating, not necessarily in value, depreciating from a physical standpoint. So you get the depreciation on that off of the taxes. And you may have to pay some taxes. You're making a ton of income. So there's all these elements of return. But you want to figure out what the return on investment is of your asset from the capital that you have. And the formula for ROI, the primary formula for ROI in real estate is our cash on cash return. Okay? The cash you make annually from the cash you invest in. Now, it's not the only measure that when we talk about ROI in real estate, we're really talking about cash on cash return. There's other measures though. Like, for instance, internal rate of return, capitalization rate. These are other measures that you look at. But the cash on cash return really measures the amount of cash you put out into investment based on the amount of income that you make on an annual basis. It's a huge measure of performance. So you want to look at that. And how you calculate the cash on cash return, or ROI, is we take the initial investment of the property. Let's say you purchase the property. And that property's initial investment, and that is your down payment plus your closing cost. Let's just say it was a hundred thousand, right? And let's just say, for example, say you're making your net positive cash flow on an annual basis is ten thousand dollars a year. Well, in order to figure out what our cash and cash return is, we take ten thousand dollars, our net positive cash flow. This is the money you take in net after you collect the rents, pay all the expenses. And you pay your mortgage. And this is net cash flow. So let's take that number of $10,000 and divide it by your initial investment. And in this example, we're saying $100,000. And we take $10,000 divided by $100,000. Our cash on cash return is 10%. Not bad. Pretty good, depending on what market you're in. In the Bay Area, that would, you're hitting a grand slam if you're making 10% cash on cash. Okay, certain parts of the Midwest, that's not so great. Most people are making 15 to 20 percent. So it depends on where you are. So you first want to see what is my return on investment. Okay, based on when I purchased the property today. Now, if you've owned it over a period of time, you can look through the years. Oh, well, I made 10 percent year one. I made 5 percent year two. I made 13 percent year three. Okay, when we calculate as brokers, we calculate the return rate to return. We're taking into account the whole return over all the years. When we're, for simplicity's sake, you want to look at the cash on cash returns. So you want to look at that last year. What do we, what do we earn this past year? The past 12 months. What does that look like? Cause that's in real time. All right. 
So that's number two. Use a formula to help you make a decision. Okay. The first part of the formula we're going to talk about in number two is cash on cash return, return on investment. Number three, expanding the mathematical formula to help you make a decision by analyzing your return on equity. Okay. I, people in the stock market, this term is more so used by folks in the stock market. But in the real estate market, this measure is very, very important because this also is measuring or determining the performance of your property's equity. A little bit different, or it should be different, from your initial investment. Because what happens with properties, especially in the Bay Area, especially in California, but really over the whole country in the last five, ten years, is they go up in value. Not all the time, but a good majority of the time, especially if you bought in, in the past five, ten years, like I said. So your investment is one measure what the return on your investment is, but that investment capital should be growing, right? So let's just say eight years ago, you used this $100,000 and you purchased the property. That, that property is yielding you $10,000 a year, right? But what happened over the last eight years, that $100,000, let's say, grew to $300,000 of equity, okay? So maybe you purchased, let's say, a $400,000 property, you put $100,000 down, now that four hundred thousand dollar property more in value, so you have hundred grand of cash turned to three hundred grand of equity. Okay, the reason why this calculation is important is because if you were to sell your property, your equity is the amount of capital you have to use. That's why it's an important measure. Okay, and in order to determine what your return on equity is. You would take that same number of net positive cash flow. So, okay, in this example, we're saying we're making $10,000 a year on a property, a property that we invested $100,000 to earn, okay? So we would take that now, $10,000, divided by $300,000, and that's going to get us a our return on equity. So that's 3.333%. Okay, now, 3.33%, okay? How does that measure up in the marketplace? Well, number three is return, figuring out your return on equity, all right? Now, taking that and saying, if I were to go buy a property today in my marketplace, what now return on investment would I be looking at? Because you take your return on equity number, Right. And then you say, if I'm only making 3.3% on my equity, can I make more than that if I sell the change and buy something else? Right. And if the answer is no, then you don't sell. Right. I'm a broker, the guy who gets paid to sell your property, telling you this, unless you have other reasons to sell. Remember, we talked about in point number one what is your long term plan? What's the property conditions? What are the market conditions? Maybe you determine that, hey, I can't beat my return on investment or my return on equity number, but I feel like market's at the top. I want to sell at the top. Okay. Or maybe you still say, hey, the property is needs major repair. I don't have capital to invest in it. Let's just get it done. Okay. So there's other considerations, but all things being considered, if you cannot make more money than your current equity is doing, Doing you don't sell it because you don't know that other property you have, all right? You know the property you own very well, you should. And if you're making more money in that property than you would on the other property, then you probably it doesn't make sense to sell. Where it makes sense to sell is where the return on investment of properties in the current marketplace will yield you more than you're making on your current return on equity. At that point, it makes a whole lot of sense to sell, okay? And conduct an exchange to get there. So if we looked at properties, let's say from Oakland, California right now, market cap rates in East Oakland, let's say at 5%, and okay? they've been lower, they've been higher. I'd say, hold and stay, I'm doing a 17 unit building right now, it's a 5% plus cap, right? And so if I say, I'm gonna go out and buy a 5% cap rate, if we just paid cash for that, you would be making 5% return of that. If you went out and leveraged it and I got all of them, 
and your loan was just say like right now three and a half percent. Well, you're probably going to end up making somewhere close to six to six and a half percent cash on cash. Well, if you're only making three and a half percent on your equity, you sell a building and then you go buy another building, and you put, and you're earning six and a half percent cash on cash return, you actually just doubled your cash flow. I doubled your income, and that is the power of doing this analysis is to help you to make this decision. Okay, this is a huge decision whether you, whether you should buy or, or I'm sorry, whether you should sell or hold on. Okay, and people who have multiple properties are a lot of people who have one or two properties are also considering this right now. It's July 2020, probably more than ever with everything that's going on in the world in the marketplace. Okay, so that's point number three is to expand your analysis by including the return on equity calculation and then comparing that with the marketplace that you're in what are average return on investments for properties that are out there? and by the way a good rule of thumb is if you're looking at a marketplace whatever the cap rates are and right now interest rates are significantly lower than cap rates whatever the cap rates are you should be running one to two percent above that in terms of your cash and cash all right, that's a, just a real rough rule of thumb. But if I got five caps and I, I, I'm getting interest rate at three and a half percent, I'm making a spread on that three and a half percent. I'm making money on the bank. What that's going to do is that it's going to increase my rate of return. Just the rule, the rule of thumb to help you figure. Now, point number four. Bottom line is let these numbers help you to make this decision. I've kind of already said this, but I wanted to make this clear because you can map out yourself or with a trusted advisor, what these numbers look like, and then make your decision based on that, okay? But the bottom line is let the numbers help you to make a decision. I see too, all too often is that people get caught up in all this money they can make themselves without really sitting down and, and doing and running these numbers and figuring out what does that next thing look like. And I think it's important. A lot of brokers out there just they want to just sell your property. That's what we get paid to do. That is actually our that we should be doing that. But the approach that I take and our company takes is that we really want to make help you to make the best move from your portfolio. Because if we have one happy customer in our business, in our investment business, we can be with you for life. You can be with us for life, right? And that could be 10, 20, 30, 40 transactions. So I really believe in doing letting the numbers help you to make this decision versus just saying hey i can sell and make a ton of money right or just ah you know um i just want to sell because i want to buy something else well, let's run the numbers does this make sense for you why does it make sense what is your long-term plan all these things that we talk about let the numbers help you to make the decision all right point five and this is a very important point is that you only sell in exchange to acquire a better asset, not to avoid taxes. Only to acquire a better asset, not to avoid taxes, because, and I should say avoid taxes, not defer taxes is the right word. We don't avoid taxes in an exchange. We defer taxes, right? So when you're selling this property, it's because I think I can sell, let's say, this 10 unit building, and I can, at this entry, go buy a 30 unit building. Well, I think I'm only making three and a half percent on on my equity. I think I can go and make six six percent because that three and a half percent may equal out to let's just say twenty or like in our example, it's ten thousand a year. Whereas you go buy something else, now it might be twenty or thirty thousand a year, and effectively you just double your income, but significantly increase. Or maybe you're in a neighborhood where you don't really like this neighborhood. Um, maybe the jobs and the path of progress is moving out of it. And you want to say I want to get out of this neighborhood, get into another. A, a better neighborhood, or I'm in this old building, I want to get into a newer building, right? But the bottom line is, you're only making this move if you can get a better asset. Not, not. Um, oh, I just want to defer tax. Okay? Deferred taxes is the icing cherry on top of it. Right? And for anyone who's ever owned an exchange, that would hurt. That's what you did it for. You just basically Wasted um, the property you used to have in your head. 
All right. But if you did it for the purpose of acquiring a better asset, even if you did, if you failed to pay taxes, but you had some cash and you eventually found a better asset, you pay taxes. Well, you accomplished the goal. You just paid the taxes. Which nobody wants to do. But the bottom line is we're trying to go from one asset to a better asset. All right. I hope this helps. I hope these things, these five points. Uh, first of all, let's go through them. First of all, point number one. What's your long term plan when deciding whether to sell? What's the property's condition? What's the market condition? What are the tax consequences? Right? Number two, employ a formula to help you make a decision on when to sell. We want to start with what's the current, what's your return on investment in this property that, you, that you're earning currently? Number three is you want to expand that analysis to include the return on equity formula to see if you measure your property's equities performance and then compare that with the marketplace return on investment. All right, number four is you let those numbers help you to make the decision. Critically important, the numbers don't lie. All right, so we're gonna let use those numbers to help us to make the decision. And number five is the only sell in exchange to acquire a better asset, not to defer taxes. The deferral of the taxes is the icing on top, that's the cherry you know, on the ice cream, okay? That's not the primary reason that we're all right, so if we, we use these uh, terms and models to help us to make decisions. We will make better investment decisions for ourselves and our families. As brokers helping our clients out there, we'll be able to win, win their loyalty and respect in business over the long term by advising them properly. So I hope this was helpful. If it was, please subscribe to our YouTube station, like this video, comment on it. If you think I'm an idiot, Tell me, I would appreciate the feedback. And if this was valuable, throw me some, some, some love on that as well. And I hope you guys are staying safe and, and sheltered in place. As we get back into society, you're using the proper you know, protocols to, to keep other people safe. And let's move forward making wise investment decisions for our families, our businesses, and the marketplace. Peace out, y'all. Have a great day.